TYT Sports, everybody, Ben Mankiewicz, Jason Rubin. Baseball has added some rule changes and some needed rule changes to at least improve the pace of play of the game. Three balls, uh, two strikes now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. Let me Wrong. tell you a very quick story. When uh, my grandfather wrote uh, Pride of the Yankees, the Lou Gehrig story, so the and uh, Sam Goldwyn was producing the movie. Goldwyn, not mm -hmm. a baseball fan, an immigrant. And, and he was bothered by the pace of the baseball scenes in the movie and asked if they could just speed things up by making it three balls. What year was strikes. this? 1941. Yeah, so there's, I mean, look, ba <laughs> baseball has a cult following. We are two of the biggest baseball fans you will meet. Ben, you've been following it longer than I've been alive. Uh, 1977, correct, when you started following baseball? Uh, 76. Yeah. 76. Oakland A's fan, I'm a New York Mets fan. And uh, when it comes down to the pace of play, it never bothered me. I always enjoyed watching the game, but I do recognize that if you want other people and to get baseball back to its, you know, I don't want to say glory days, you this need to make some of these rule changes. But real quick, we have to go over what those rule changes are. Uh, one, batters have to keep one foot in the batter's box unless it's a, the, ex the exception to that rule, which is foul tip. And a swing, basically. Swing. Any right. swing or your brushed back or some other event that the umpire takes. Right, I can imagine if you get, basically have to duck out of the way for a pitch. Yeah, yeah. You can get out of the batter's box, call time, reset your gloves, uh, you're good and, to go. And you find $500 if you don't get back in starting May 1st, and the umpire can theoretically, if you don't get back in, call a strike. Call a strike. Uh, who is going end? to rack up the most fines for not getting into the batter's box? I don't know. I mean, they, they say it's not supposed to be punitive. They're trying to change the culture. They're not right. trying to collect the fines of $500. We're talking about, you know, David Ortiz can handle right. 50 go $500 with, fines. Right. <laughs> at, le at least. It could be more than that. Uh, another rule that we know that they're adding is the you have to call replays from the dugout. And, so uh, we don't have to go through the charade of the umpire coming out and having a con or the manager right. coming out having a fake conversation with the umpire while right. we wait for a thumbs up. He's just asking how the day is going. Really, right. we all know this. Uh, and lastly, uh, play will resume immediately after the broadcast returns to the game. So well, two, commercial break. Two of those are, are really potentially uh, critically important. And and first of all, this conversation like uh, like global warming and climate change, like the the conversation is about climate, not about the weather. And this conversation shouldn't be about pace of play. Pace of play is sacred in baseball. It's what makes baseball different. It's what makes it great. The tension between batter and pitcher in key moments, the fact that you are not on a clock. There's talk of a pitch clock. There was a pitch clock, I believe, in the Arizona Fall League. That may happen. I don't like that idea without trying these first. What we're trying to do is shorten the time of the game, not really make, we're not trying to make people go faster. Right. The idea of pace of play is, is sacred. But the fact of the matter is, when they come back from a commercial break, yeah, within seven seconds, we should say, back here for the top of the seventh inning, Ruben on the mound, Mankiewicz step to the plate, fastball up high, 1-0. and oh. Like, let's go when we're back from the commercial. Fastball low and away, Mankiewicz swings 0-1. Oh let's, let's get that right. Um, so uh, I, I think that that's fairly critical, and I think if look if you start a couple times, you you guy steps out of the box and and when he's not supposed to, and you call a strike on him, and he finds right. himself down 0-2 or 1-2 or God forbid strike three. Uh, yeah, first of all, there's going to be a game slowing down argument right. to follow, but um, uh, but that ultimately over time will change it. And and you know in 1981 the games were just over two and a half hours long. Now they're just over three hours. We've added I think 30. Three minutes or over 30 minutes yes. since 1981, and there's no. Uh, we we got to get these games back to 245. Yes, yes. I, I think 245. If you're going to start quantifying how long every game should be, I mean, I've been to many of baseball games that just the pace was beautiful, and it happened two hours and 15 minutes. A great day at the ballpark. I've also been at games right, but, but where the, but we're at, we're at over three hours for right. average. So the, it's not just the pace; it's the culture. I agree with that 100%. Uh, and little things also that I believe that should be added to that is less warm-up pitches when they get to the mound for relievers. Um, um, no, I think they need their eight. But yeah, but that but said, they got it. But they again, have their eight. They have their their hundred, not hundred. They have their you know, 15, but it's a new mound. In the, I, got, I know interesting mount. guys I, getting hurt. That's not even. Also, there's a commercial break then, so we can get those guys in. The key is get them start. in quickly. Right. Get them in quickly. Right. Uh, the other possibility, which is a totally intriguing one, which could speed things up, is making relievers face two hitters instead of one, uh, which would prevent one-to-one that, -one matchups. It would totally, that. that would totally change the, the strategy of a game. It would totally change the strategy, but there would still be intense strategy. You would still have to pick which pitcher you wanted to face that right-handed right. hitter or to face but a lefty and then a righty. that definitely benefits... 
the lineup because you can structure your lineups, I guess, in certain ways that would have lefty righty. So no, a well, that's coming want, to a lefty and, and you're looking and you're looking to yeah. increase offense. That would work also, but it would that's definitely true. slow down pitching. It would make it would make over the course of a season fewer pitching changes, and would make manage and would require look requiring lefties to be able to uh, some situational lefties to be forced to be able to get out a right-handed batter. Not the worst thing in the world, and so you got maybe you got the three, four, five hitters coming up, and you're looking at at, at lefty, righty, lefty. Okay, let's leave you. Want, then you're going to have to leave that lefty in to face the righty. That's interesting. That strategy. Yeah, uh, I, I like it. So right. I, I read that from I think Buster Olney, uh, and I think it's uh, totally intriguing. All right. Well, there it is. Our quarterly baseball clip. <laughs> ben Mankiewicz, Jason Rubin. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to subscribe.